Hi again, this is Janet Defoe here with Ron Davis with another update on research. And this research is uh, generously funded by OMF through all the donations that, that um, patients and their loved ones and caregivers and people who care about this disease have been donating. And right now it's the end of the triple, triple, whatever it's called, triple giving campaign, triple matching, triple Tuesday. Triple Tuesday. <laughs> and uh, so there's just a couple more days left. So your donation would um, be tripled. Um, so hopefully um, everybody can be as generous as possible. Right now I'm, I'm interviewing Ron about a project that was just funded by OMF um, and about neutrophils and they've posted a written thing about it, but I wanted Ron to be able to talk to you about it. Um, and hopefully this is in time for Triple Tuesday. Okay, so you've got money to do your neutrophils project right, now. Right, right. Well, it's starting and uh, it's been going for a little while. We have, have had a number of preliminary data before we wrote the proposal. Um, so this uh, neutrophils are part of the immune system. They're part of the innate immune system. And that is a system that survey, does survey in your blood and in your tissues for uh, something foreign like a bacteria or a virus. So it's always there uh, and also responds to any tissue damage uh, or inflammation and goes to the site of the damage and cleans up uh, the site. Uh, so the, these cells are not long lived. They're made in the bone marrow, uh, but they're very uh, fragile in the sense that one of the things that they do, which is strange, but when they get to a site where there's a bunch of bacteria, they just uh, explode. And uh, all their DNA, which is a lot of DNA, streams out and makes a net and uh, kind of traps everything. And then, it, and then it proceeds to chew up the, the mess. Uh, for other cells, not those cells that, that what explode are dead, uh, but it's uh, it's something that is kind of curious, but that makes them hard to work with. Uh, so the standard procedure for doing this is isolating blood and then centrifuging it, but th that's very harsh on them, and uh, it appears to even activate some of them, and so they actually lice. Uh, lice also, means what? Uh, lice means they break they, apart. They break apart. Uh, also, that uh, because they're fragile, you can't freeze them. So it makes it difficult to work with, and that's why there's very few studies done on them. But uh, we're in a good position to do that because patients come to our lab. Uh, we have a, a blood drawing facility there in the lab, very close to where we do the isolations. Uh, and so uh, this is an ideal uh, project for us to take on, and it hasn't been studied very much at all. And so the first thing, though, is we want to change the protocol of how you isolate them. And it has to be much more gentle, and it can't be centrifugation. Uh, so it's something called a microfluidic device is being developed, where we can capture the cells in the microfluidic device without activating them. Uh, it, it's going to be a simple little procedure where the blood flows through some channels, and then uh, it, uh, it absorbs out the neutrophils and throws and lets pass everything else. I hope that we can get that developed because that'll be very simple to use and export to other laboratories. And you have a new person in your lab working on this? Yes, Vanessa is in the lab. She has experience in uh, microfluidics. She has experience in uh, mechanical engineering kinds of projects, in addition to uh, experience with working with uh, uh, human tissue. So, so she's excellent for this project. Um, and this was really sort of her idea that she thought she could do all these things. So it's great to have her initiate this. And uh, so uh, one of the things we would like to do, uh, and that is uh, she did some preliminary work uh, by looking at how fast uh, neutrophils move on a, uh, on a nice surface. Um, and th they will move to the site of, of an infection, for example. And so she mimics an infection site, diffusing something down the, down the, the, the trail, 
and then measured how fast they move. What and is she putting them on? I, I think it's an auger surface, but it's some surface that we didn't develop. It's something that I think other people have used. And uh, I looked at the migration rate, and then MECFS uh, neutrophils are much slower. So how do you do that? You like take a video of them or something? Yeah, there's going to be various ways to measure that. A video is the simplest thing to do, set up, but that won't be the final version of it because that's too that's too clumsy and expensive. Uh, we will probably put some kind of detectors in the surface and see them and, and see them pass little little gates. Uh, that could be yeah. easily uh, manufactured and make it cheap. You guys are so tricky. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so this is just a standard like dog race, <laughs> right? And so it's a very simple thing to do. We can probably make very simple equipment, and it might be a diagnostic test. So, what do you find uh, when they're moving? How they're different? They're slower. They slower than what? Healthy, healthy intravenous. And uh, we just have to measure a number of those to make sure we get good reproducibility of it. That's that's what we haven't done yet. Have you uh, tried it on any other illnesses? No. Is that a plan? Uh, it, it, yes, with some uh, some caveats. So we think what's happened in MECFS is the innate immunity gets stuck on. And uh, it, what should happen when you have an infection is the innate immunity is activated. Uh, and uh, there's a number of things like the neutrophils uh, that are present, already present, and that can take care of a lot of the uh, infection. And then uh, once you're acquired immunity, which is making T cells and B cells and uh, that are responding specifically to the infecting organism and very effective, but it takes several days for that to happen. And so when that does happen, when the, when the acquired immunity kicks on, uh, the innate immunity is supposed to turn off. And we're thinking that from looking at the data we've collected so far, that it doesn't turn off. And uh, that's a little difficult to all totally figure out, but that's what that's one of our working hypothesis. Um, and that's related to the attackinate shunt. And what also. happened is, yes, you've, we have had another video about the attackinate shunt. The attackinate shunt is turned on uh, during the innate immunity phase. And that attackinate shunt decreases your ability to uh, produce ATP in cells. And ATP is energy. And ATP is the source of energy. So if that's all true, uh, it's not surprising that you're fatigued. And, yeah. and that's what you see uh, when you get sick, you feel tired and, and that pathway is turned on and that's why you feel tired. And even when you get a vaccine, it's a foreign, looks like a foreign invasion, which you have to have to make your immune system, your uh, uh, acquired immune system, recognize that and make a defense against it. But in the process of that, your uh, innate immunity is also turned on. So when you get a vaccine, you often feel tired. So acquired immunity is also called adaptive immune adaptive system. Adaptive immunity, sorry, yes. They're, both. they're called both things, yeah, right. but, so you're not confused. Um, and some people say, oh, they gave me, it gave me the illness. No, it did not give you the illness. It is simply turned on your innate immunity. So how did neutrophils fit into this? Get into? The innate immune system, the attack innate shunt. Well, they're, Making you they're, sick. they're part of the innate Im immune system. So they get a, they are activated to go and find uh, a site of infection or inflammation. And uh, of course they could be not regulated well and they may be causing damage. And we need to look at that as well. So is the most exciting thing about this that it could be diagnostic or is it also um, help figure out a treatment possibly? Um, well, you always, when we, every time we do an experiment, we always think about uh, how can we fix this? How can we use a drug to fix this or some kind of treatment? And that's, we constantly are talking about that. I, I'm not so sure other people do because they think it's too complicated, but it isn't all that complicated. 
and you and you need to understand the mechanism. And we're doing a pretty hefty effort to try to understand the attack on H front and how to turn it off. Uh, we're very optimistic if we can figure out how to turn off the innate immunity that that will actually cure the patients. And it, it should be possible because it's supposed to turn off. So a, a switch has just gotten stuck somehow. So that's, uh, but uh, the neutrophils, I'm optimistic about being a very simple diagnostic test. It's gonna be, it's, if it's true, it's gonna be very cheap. Will it make a little microfluidic device that will isolate the neutrophils and then put them into the, the racetrack <laughs> and see how fast they move. And uh, that could be very inexpensive and very simple not requiring uh, any special equipment. And that's always the problem. If, uh, if you're in a doctor's office, they could actually run this. So if you're just telling the difference between healthy and ME-CFS, that's very useful because so many people think that ME-CFS patients don't have a real disease. Right. Um, but if you could differentiate it between diseases, that would be specific to ME-CFS. Right. Uh, the technical problem we have is that a lot of diseases, like autoimmune diseases, they show fatigue as well. And they could show fatigue because they have the uh, innate immunity also stuck on. And uh, this is a total new idea. Uh, and the problem is when you have an autoimmune disease, they find an antibody or a possible T cell reaction and say that's what's causing the disease. And they don't think of anything else. And when I've asked doctors, you know, why are they fatigued when they have an autoimmune disease? They say, because they have an autoimmune disease. <laughs> That's the end of their thinking. And so they don't understand, they don't think about the molecular mechanism that's going on. It's very possible. Uh, and I don't want to get sidetracked. So um, that's very possible. It's very possible that the innate immunity is stuck on in autoimmune diseases as well. And so if we did that, we say, oh, well, they're slower in. Uh, and, and lupus, well, where's that? Where's that going to take us? It's a distraction. Uh, if we had a lot of money, we would do so, We would just do that too, but we don't. <laughs> so uh, we have to be very careful not to get distracted on something that's, that's potentially scientifically very exciting. Because we have to figure out MECFS because it doesn't appear that very many people are really working on this problem, and so. Uh, I want to stay focused and find a, a treatment. Now, if we actually find a way to cure uh, MECFS, we will then turn attention to an autoimmune disease. Uh, and, or we can get some collaborators that will sp spend their money, uh, like some of the people who are working on autoimmune disease, let's say here at Stanford, and we would probably try to talk them into doing some of these things. Uh, with our help, but not, not with our expenses. So uh, it's an exciting project. It's something new, and it's always good to do that. OK. Thank you. So you're excited. Yeah. This is Ron's excited yeah, face. I'm excited he even laughed in the middle of this. Yeah. yeah. Good. OK. So thank you so much. Thank you for your donations. Thank you to OMF for just, you know, holding our hand yeah. through all of this, all of these years and funding us and so many other people and being just visionary together um, with the researchers that we all are collaborating with. So I just thank you from the bottom of my heart and wish you a happy Thanksgiving weekend and I know that's very hard for a lot of people who can't get together with their family. And I want you to know that we are in that boat because we couldn't see Whitney. Uh, but we thought about you all day long and we are so dedicated to getting you better. So absolutely. So hang in there. <laughs>